When it comes to learning how to visualize, I would suggest first trying to visualize simple, linear things. The goal here is to construct images in your mind using lines. Once you have a firm grasp on that, start to visualize in light. Visualize how dark something is, how light something is. Even try to turn the object in your mind. After that, visualize in colors, incorporating hue and saturation, which is even more difficult. After that, visualize in time. Think about how you would finish this painting from beginning to end. What would the sketch be? What would the drawing be? What would the underpainting be? Think about all the different steps that you would go through to complete this piece. You can practice this even without drawing or painting, so you can do it constantly. Whatever you see in the world, look at it and ask yourself, how would I paint this? What would be the first step? What would be the second step? What would be the third step? And so on and so forth. I do this all the time. Sometimes it's even hard to turn off. When I'm driving, I might look at the road and start thinking, how would I paint this picture? What would I start off with? Maybe a gradient here, and then I'd paint the road, followed by the basic structure of the cars, and all the highlights here and there and so on. And before you know it, I don't even notice I'm driving. In addition to practicing new ways of thinking and trying to master them, there are other habits and knowledge you can adopt to help you succeed. Increase your vocabulary of descriptive words. When you increase the number of words you can use to describe the subtleties of different pieces of art, you will increase your ability to perceive them, and by extension, you will increase your ability to think more descriptively and produce art that can be described by others in many different ways. When you draw, don't doodle, but learn. Doodling means that you're just spending time doing random things and you're not trying to learn. Perhaps you're trying to create something, but the thing that you're creating is not challenging for you and therefore not helping you to improve. Always try to create for the purpose of learning something. That's the best way to increase your skill level. Don't just create for the sake of creating. Push yourself. Challenge yourself. We all have a huge amount of potential talent waiting to be unlocked, but effort is the key to creating the tools that you will need to release this talent. So if you're just drawing without putting forth the effort to learn, then you will learn very slowly because you will not be concentrating on building the tools you need to create complex ideas. Have you ever had an idea in your head of a great painting? You see it very clearly and proceed to paint it down. However, by the time you're done, it looks nothing like you'd first envisioned it. This is probably because you didn't have the proper artistic skills or tools to create exactly what was in your head. The muscles in your brain, the different ways to think, those are your tools for creating. And once you start strengthening these ways of thinking, you'll find that you have a crane to build things with instead of a nail and a rock. Start creating the cranes, earth movers, and power tools of your mind. And develop your proficiency with all of these tools. When you have the right tools, you will be able to create anything. A great practice to help develop the initial tools that you need to create your own style and to make great art exactly as you intended it is to study different artists. That's why I created Schoolism.com. In Schoolism, I contact the artists that I like and I ask them to teach courses about the way that they do the art that they do, explain their methods and philosophies. And then the students, including myself, would watch the lessons and improve our skills. Even if I know how to do something one way, it's still valuable for me to learn how other people successfully do the same thing, but in their own ways. Then I could best choose which way is the most effective which one I like the most, and perhaps improve my own methods by learning from others. Learning from others is a great habit to get into because when you study another artist, you're learning the knowledge that they've already learned, except you're doing so through their lens. So while you wouldn't want to create a style solely out of a Frankenstein combination of a bunch of different artists, this is nevertheless a quick and efficient way of building a necessary foundation of techniques, knowledge, and style. So when you study an artist by copying his or her work, try to analyze their 
every line, every brushstroke, and understand the rationale behind every aspect of their art. Why did they make this line or brushstroke this way instead of some other way? What does it add to the piece? What is its interpretation of the subject? When studying other artists, it's important to diversify. A lot of people fall into the trap of concentrating on only their favorite artist and painting and drawing the heck out of that artist's work until they become a watered down clone of the artist that they were studying. Doing this will not give your art or ideas any value. You must develop your own identity as an artist. According to Peter Desev, style is as personal as a fingerprint. I think all of the styles that we love and admire, artists whose work with that really turns us on, I think those people found, they tapped into something in themselves that was really personal and, and meant something to them. It wasn't about what was popular then, and it wasn't them trying to figure out, well, what, you know, what would be, what would be great? What would everybody love? I think, I mean, at least for me, I, I've always made the kind of pictures that, that I liked, you know. I, I, um, I think a style really comes uh, out of uh, a, a very personal place. I don't think it comes from outside of you. I don't think it's something you can target. I, I, I think you end up just monkeying and mimicking somebody else if you don't do something that comes from, you know, a genuine place of interest or passion in yourself. The best way to create your own style is to search for knowledge. With knowledge, your style will form itself. But once you've gathered a wide enough sampling of information as filtered by the artists that you studied, where do you go to find this last intangible spark of knowledge that will give life and originality to your own style? Simply put, you go to the source of art, life. Consider that art is an interpretation of life. Therefore, it stands to reason that good artists are great at interpreting life and do so in such a way that is very appealing to their audience. So when you're studying other artists, I say you're sampling because no matter how great their interpretation of life might be, it will only be an interpretation, which means you will be interpreting the interpretation. Other artists can and will inform your art, but ultimately, your interpretation of life must be your own, which is why the only thing that can give your art that unique you-ness is your own experience and how you, not some other successful artist, but you yourself interpret life. If you can learn to perceive life more effectively, this would result in an immediate improvement in the quality of your art. Schoolism Live Workshops is a fantastic opportunity to learn from your Schoolism teachers live, in person, when you receive education from someone that is known for what they do, successful at it. It's learning on a whole new level, being taught their personal techniques, methods, philosophies that have taken their amazing careers to where they are today. The experience of going to a Schoolism Live workshop is truly education evolved. So people are saying, they're looking at a person and they're saying, okay, I want to represent, I want to capture that idea with, with, a, with an image, right? So this would, might be something similar to what the cavemen were doing, right, with, when they're trying to depict a person. Rather, I want to make sure I'm clear with my ideas, right? We're talking about clarity of ideas, right? And then what ends up happening is I start enhancing it and adding more. Um, sort of like my sketch style. I start simple, light, and then build and build and build. Even as a working professional, you have to stay sharp. You have to keep evolving, keep learning. 
because our industry is evolving. And for artists to keep up, or better yet, get ahead, the best way to do that is to learn from the people that are already there. That's why I love like hanging out with more artists because we can go on for days just talking about art. I love it, right? Hi, I'm Katie. I came all the way from Michigan to come to the Schoolism workshops today and um, I'm so glad I did. They were amazing. I learned so much. Um, very interactive and uh, picked up some great tips and I hope they continue to do more of them because I'll be coming back. Come check us out. And stay tuned as Schoolism Live Workshops visits a city near you.